Hi everyone, this is Pasha. In this video, I want to show you how to create reports for your Facebook ads and how to analyze the performance of your campaigns in Excel spreadsheets and pivot tables to see what is performing and what is not performing for you so you can optimize your campaigns. In order to create your reports, on Facebook Ad Manager, click on the left side menu on All Tools and then click on Ads Reporting. Now we are on the reporting uh, interface. To create a new report, just uh, click on this green button, Create Report. First, I'm going to select my account and then press create. Facebook gives you three options to create your report, pivot table, line chart, or bar chart. Because I, I want to take my data into Excel and create pivot table, I'm going to go with the pivot table option, which is the default one. As you see on the right side, you can select your columns, your metrics and dimensions. Here on this interface, it shows you the preview of your report, how it looks like. And you have option to create your date range and also make some filters. The first thing that I'm going to do is to create a filter for myself based on campaign name to select which campaigns I want to download a report form. Uh, all you need to do is just uh, click on this section, type the name of your campaign. My campaign name is T65 and select this option. Campaign name contains T65. Now on the preview, uh, I am just seeing the data for campaigns which have T65 in their name. Because I ran different uh, objectives for this campaign, I ran lead generation, conversion and reach objectives. And I, I have all of those objectives in campaign names. I am going to add another filter for reach and this time instead of campaign name contains I will select that campaign name does not contain reach because I don't want to look at the reach campaigns at the moment I just want to look at the lead generation and conversion campaigns. Now I'm going to select my date range uh, I ran these campaigns uh, some time ago in 2021, so I'm going to select um, from 1st of January, let's say, to end of September. Now we are going to customize our table and select the metrics and dimensions or breakdowns that we want. Some of them are already uh, uh, selected by default. You could uncheck them or just let, leave them be. For dimensions or breakdowns, I want to have campaign name in my report I want to have ad set name and I want to have ad name. So I select ad name option. Because I had uh, so many ads, it's taking some time. Another thing that uh, it's always useful to add to your filters, just select this option, had delivery. So if your campaign was not active in that time period, it, it won't show on the, reports, uh, on the report and it saves you time. And if uh, your report is too big, it, 
it really makes life easier for you. Just uh, select Had Delivery. Now, uh, campaign name, ad set name, and ad name are enough for me for dimensions or breakdowns. Now I'm going to select my metrics or my uh, metrics are numbers. Uh, the columns that I want for my report, I want to keep amount spent, the amount that each campaign is spent. I want to keep impressions. I don't want reach at the moment. I don't need it for this report. Results, uh, it, uh, I certainly want that. It tells you uh, based on your objective, how many results you receive. For example, how many sales, how many forms completed and whatever uh, results that you had in, selected for your campaign. Cost per result, that is a useful option to tell you uh, how much was the cost per result for each campaign you s or for each ad set for e or for each ad. You certainly want, uh, in order to optimize your campaigns, you want to focus, to keep your focus on campaigns or ads that had lower cost per result. But I'm going to uncheck that. The reason that I don't want this in my report um, is that in Excel, I will show you later, I'm going to make a formula, formula and create this metric cost per results based on other metrics that I have. And the reason is that in pivot tables, you never want to have formula calculated uh, metrics. Uh, you always want to create the calculated metrics by yourself in order to, for your pivot table to work correctly. Delivery, I don't want it for my report. Frequency, I don't want it. Link clicks, I want that. How many clicks uh, my ads received? For clicks, there are actually two options. You can uh, select link clicks or here in the search button, you could uh, search for your metrics. There is another option called landing page views. Now the difference between link clicks and landing page views. The link clicks, the clicks are the clicks that user make on your ad and landing page views is uh, how many times they uh, landed on your uh, website, on your landing page, if you were running a conversion uh, or traffic campaign. For conversion campaigns, I use, if I have a website, I usually select landing page views because it gives me better, uh, more insightful data about my users. For link clicks, it's possible that somebody clicks on your ad by mistake and uh, before uh, your landing page loads, it closes the page and doesn't even see the landing page. Or if your website is, uh, takes a, a little time to load completely, Users clicks but uh, closes uh, the landing page before it loads because it's taking too much time for them. Uh, so landing page views gives better insights about uh, the users that actually clicked on your ad and landed and viewed your landing page. But uh, as I said, uh, my ca I had two, uh, two objectives for my campaigns, both lead generation and a conversion campaign. Lead generation campaign uh, were just native forms on Facebook that users click on the ads and fill in, fills in the form that uh, was provided by Facebook. It doesn't, uh, he, uh, the user doesn't even exit Facebook. So for lead generation, there is no landing page view uh, data uh, or as you see, there is very little data. I have 537 click on this ad but only nine uh, landing page views and the reason is that there is no landing page for forms there is just 
a form. A uh, user is not going to visit your website. So, uh, because landing page uh, view is not really useful for lead gener form lead generation campaigns, I'm not going to use that this time, but I just wanted to let you know that if you have a website, if your objective is for users to convert on your website, visit your website, landing page view is a better option than link clicks. I am going to uh, uncheck landing page views. Uh, there are some default options here. For example, attribute setting. I really don't really want it, yeah, so I'm going to on select that. It must be in breakdown. The reason that I am on, on checking removing these uh, unwanted columns from my report is that uh, the more columns that you have, the more data that you have, your report will be heavier and your Excel file will be bigger. It will, it will take more time to download your report from Facebook and it's, uh, it's more difficult to work on an Excel file when it is too big. So try just to include the columns that you actually need. There is another column and selected by default, scheduled, I don't want that to So let me, let's see, I have campaign name, I have ad set name, I have ad name, impression, results, spend, clicks, and just that, I don't need anything else. The rest of data, we are going to calculate them on Excel field, on Excel uh, files. Sometimes I select day to re analyze my data based on day when I am analyzing in a short periods of time. But because this is a long, uh, is, this is a long time range from 1st of January to September 30. Uh, if I add day, it's going to take so much time to download my report. So I'm not selecting that. Okay, now you have the, the option to save your report. You could give a name for it here. For example, I'm going to give a name for YouTube tutorial. Uh, you could save uh, your campaign here. And to download your report, just press on this option, which is export. Facebook gives you, uh, tell, I ask you uh, in what format to, you need your data. Uh, I am going to select the default one, raw data table. Here it is exporting my data because there's lots of data, it's taking some time. Okay, my report was downloaded. I am uh, looking at the downloads in my browser and the latest one is this one. Hmm. Okay, let me zoom a little. Uh, as you see, I have all, my co all the columns that I had selected. I am going to do something, this is not really related to the uh, reports that you are going to download, but because I have a, a special naming, naming convention for my campaigns, I'm just going to separate the names and for campaigns and ad sets and ad names, so I can analyze my data easier. I repeat that this is not something that you have to do this is something that you need to do only if you have a special naming convention for your campaigns. Uh, I'm just copying this uh, first column campaign name to the end. I'm going to separate them by tab. 
as you see it changed uh, for each part of the name of my campaign uh, the name of my campaign was palm beach t65 lead generation here uh, this is the name of my campaign palm beach lead generation t65 lead generation it just separated each part into different columns uh, i am adding this new column to make analysis of the data easier for me for this column i'm going to call them city uh, this column i don't really need that because all of my campaigns are t65 lead generation i can call it objective because they must be either lead generation or web conversion i am going to do the same for my ad sets again separate each part of the name I call this audience I don't need these two columns and also my ads I am separating each part of the ad name I don't need this part I don't need this part mm, this part I'm not sure no I don't need this okay this is creative name this column I don't need this text overlay and this is my copy add copy I, I recommend you do the same when you create campaigns in your account you specify a special naming convention for yourself so when the number of your campaigns are too many you can uh, see uh, you can uh, not you, you should uh, not to get confused you know uh, as I have too many campaigns in my account it will be difficult without a naming convention to find what I want okay now I have all my columns all my data now we are I'm going to show you how to create a pivot table and analyze data just select uh, just click on one of the cells uh, in your uh, file in your spreadsheet on the top menu in your excel click on insert and just uh, select pivot table and just select OK. As you see, uh, Excel created a new spreadsheet in the file for me called Sheet 1. You could change it if you want. And Pivot Table. I'm going to show you how Pivot Table is, is going to help you to analyze your data. Here, on the right side, you have the list of your columns or they are called fields and you choose which columns you want to look at the first column that I'm going to add as a dimension as a breakdown or as a row is a city or campaign name let's say as you see my campaign names are very difficult to read and they are too many some of them are for example i have atlanta with both lead generation and web conversion so instead of campaign name i'm going to select city now i can see which uh, city is performing better or worse uh, for metrics or values or your numbers and the data that I want are amount spend. I want impressions. I want, uh, let me zoom a little so that you can see better. I want clicks. Uh, 
keep in mind sometimes when you add uh, metrics to the values uh, it should be some if uh, if you see they are count but uh, if they are by default count just right click on that click uh, summarize values by and change it to sum so that it summarize all the link clicks for Atlanta and I want results how many results I got from each city or each campaign again it's uh, by default it was selected as count I'm going to change it as to sum okay one thing uh, that I always uh, would love to uh, always like to do for my pivot tables uh, I'm going to right click on my pivot table select this option field settings oh sorry select on pivot table options here on format section uh, I'm going to select this option for errors value show blank if I don't select this for the uh, errors for the calculated fields when there is no data uh, Excel will show some weird uh, characters uh, I don't like that I want them to just show as blank and I'm going to uncheck autofill column width on update if I don't do that, every every change that I make to my pivot table, the pivot ta the width of the column uh, will change automatically, and I don't want that. I want them to be fixed, so I'm I'm going to uncheck that. This step is not necessary. It is uh, this is something something that I feel uh, makes the things easier for me. So I always do that before working on all, any data, and just press on OK. Okay, I'm going to select this uh, column, change the format to currency because the, the, it is amount spend. For impression and clicks, I'm going to change them to numbers. And for results, I'm going to change it. Uh, non accounting actually so that oh sorry to numbers and now we need to calculate in some fields we need to look at click through rate conversion rate cpc cpa cpm i will tell you how uh, to add them and why they are useful because this, uh, these are just our raw data, the things that, uh, the data that we already had in our downloaded file, it's just uh, put them in a pivot table, aggregated data, but in fact, it's not going to tell us much. Uh, okay, now from this data, I see that, okay, Atlanta has spent about $95,000, Chicago has spent about $100,000, Rich Bond has spent $25,000. Atlanta, I, I, I received 475 results from Atlanta. I received 621 from Palm Beach. Okay, these data are good to read, uh, but they're not giving me any insight. Okay, I don't, I cannot compare whether uh, between uh, Atlanta and, for example, Richmond, which one performed better? Okay, one spent more, one spent less, one uh, gave me more results. Uh, I, obviously, because it spent more, one gave me less results because it spent less. Uh, but uh, does the campaign with higher spend and higher results actually performs, performs better? Uh, we cannot say, we cannot tell that. Uh, so I need some metrics, some data to be able to compare the performance. Here on the top menu, uh, just uh, uh, click on uh, any cell in your pivot table. On the top menu, two options appear, pivot table, analyze and design. 
to create a, a calculated field, a formula field, click on pivot table option, click on fields, items, and sets, and click on calculated fields. I'm going to cre uh, cal create some calculated fields. The first one is CTR. CTR is, uh, stands for click to rate and it tells you uh, out of how uh, the impression that your ads uh, received, how many times people clicked based on impression. So it gives you a standard, standard metric to uh, see whether your ad re uh, click uh, received higher clicks or lower clicks. The, uh, here on the top field I give the name and on bottom field formula I need to uh, give the formula for my field. The formula to calculate CTR or click to rate is clicks, link clicks or landing page views if you selected that in your report. Here we have link clicks into two impressions. And I'm pressing OK. It added a new column to my pivot table called CTR. And I'm going to change that to percentage because uh, you read CTR click through rates by percentage. The other thing, the other uh, fields that we need to add, calculated fields, I'm going to add CVR or conversion rate. Conversion rate give, uh, tells you based on the number of clicks that you received, how many results, how many conversions you, res, uh, you obtained. Here in my uh, report, the conversions are either uh, forms uh, filled by users on lead generation campaigns or submitting form on my website on web conversion campaigns. The acronym for conversion rate is CVR. I mean, you could uh, uh, give it any name that you want. You could uh, type it as conversion rate or whatever else that you want. It's, the name is not going to make any difference. The name just uh, is something that uh, you need to look at that and it's just for your personal use. The formula for conversion name is conversion rate is conversions or results is, is called results on Facebook. Sorry, let me do that again. Results two clicks. And I press add. Again, conversion rate must be percentage. The next one is, the next field that I'm going to add is called CPL or cost per lead. If you remember at the beginning of the video, I said that I'm not going to download cost per result column from Facebook. And I'm going to calculate it uh, by myself on pivot table because it is a calculated field. To tell you why I don't want to download calculated fields, if I download a calculated field such as cost per, cost per result, it will show as a column here and it will be a raw data. It won't be formula. So in my pivot table uh, for grand total or for aggregated data, for example, for Atlanta, I had two uh, different campaigns, two campaigns for Atlanta. When I aggregate them, uh, the calculated field uh, for cost per lead won't, uh, won't be accurate for the aggregate data or for example, for grand total. Uh, so that's why I wanted uh, to calculate my, the calculated fields by myself so that they show correctly for total and aggregated data. 
PBO table analyze, field item and set, CPL or cost per lead you could call that or whatever you want. The formula for that is amount spent to uh, results. If I can find it here it is. Amount spent to results. Okay. As uh, CPL cost per lead is a cost, it is a currency. I need two more uh, fields. CPC cost per click, how much each click uh, was uh, cost you when someone clicks on your ad. The formula is amount spent to clicks. CPC stands for cost per click again it is cost it is a currency the last uh, calculated field that i want is called cpm or cost per mile is a standard formula in it's a standard metric in advertising industry it tells you how much each 1000 impression cost for you and the formula to calculate that is spend uh, into impressions and 1000 because it is how much uh, each 1000 impressions cost you Again, it is cost, I'm going to change it to currency. You don't really need to change this uh, formats if you are not going to present to anybody. I'm just changing them to make it easier for me. Another uh, interesting thing that you can do on uh, pivot tables, uh, sometimes it's good because you have too many columns, so uh, they might, you know, uh, become L larger than the number of columns become larger than bigger than your screen it goes at uh, this part you have to uh, move this elevator all the time it doesn't feel good uh, so i'm going to change the name of my columns to remove these sums you cannot right click uh, you cannot uh, right click and rename them no it doesn't work like that you just need to right click uh, value field settings and here change the name of the column I'm just going to call this spend or let's call it cost, cost of my campaign. Now you see my, the width of my column is uh, smaller, it makes things easier. For impressions, I'm going to rename it as uh, imper. Some of link links, I'm going to rename it to clicks. Some of results, I'm just going to rename it to results. Here, CTR, I'm going to uh, rename it to CTR. This is conversion rate. I'm going to rename it to conversion rate only. CPL, CPC, and CPM. I'm not going to change them, but uh, you got the idea. You could uh, rename your column names to make things easier and smaller for you. Now let's analyze our data. Now we just reached to the point that uh, we can get insights from uh, the data. All these things that I showed you actually after uh, a few times of working with these files, uh, watching this video, or you know, practicing, getting some uh, downloading some reports, creating some templates on ad reports on Facebook. All the things that I showed you is not going to take more than five minutes. So you shouldn't really be worried about uh, the, uh, this anal analysis taking too much time. No, they are very fast. I mean, 
after you know what you want to do for the next report for the next campaign you just do the same thing at I, I promise it's not going to take more than five minutes of your time to create this pivot table okay now I'm looking I'm going to sort my data based on uh, let's say result uh, conversion rate right click on the first cell on that column sort largest to smallest now what can I get from this data? What insight can I get? It's tell me uh, Tidewater City has higher conversion rate. It's performing well. You always want to have a high conversion rate. That is one of the most important metrics that you always want to look at when you're running uh, paid campaigns on Facebook or on any or our, or our on any other advertising platform so tight water is performing well it has a high conversion rate therefore I can increase the span I can give it more budget to that on the other hand Miami Dade uh, it, uh, it has a very low conversion rate only 1.57 so it's not really performing that well in terms of conversion rate. The conversion rate is very low. Another thing, uh, you, sh you could look at your CPL, cost per leads. Uh, let's sort based on cost per lead. Uh, actually, you the cost per lead mo uh, should be lower. The lower cost per lead or cost per result, it means the performance is better. Usually higher conversion rates means a lower uh, CPL but uh, other metrics other uh, data such as a cost per click CPC or cost per mile CPM could affect the uh, your cost per lead too but generally uh, a co higher conversion rate results in lower CPL So uh, again, Tidewater, Greater Tampa, South and North, uh, Richmond, uh, the top uh, cities, they have lower uh, cost per lead. So for my next campaign, uh, I should give more budget to these campaigns. I should maybe double the budget of cam uh, Tidewater campaign. Instead of spending $37, $37,000, I can give $60,000 budget to Tidewater because it is performing well. It's, I'm getting good results from this campaign. You want to put your money where you are getting better results. On the other hand, Miami-Dade and Chicago and Cincinnati, they are very expensive for my campaigns. Uh, those cities are expensive for my campaigns. So I either stop running my campaigns completely on those cities or I give a less uh, budget to them. For example, here I gave $1,000, $100,000 to Chicago. Uh, it has very high CPL at 278. While uh, I, if I had given that amount of money, at least half of that to Tidewater, I would have get, uh, uh, got uh, higher results because the CPL is lower. And remember, uh, one question that I always uh, get from uh, a lot of people is that what is a good conversion rate? What is a good uh, click-through rate? What is a good cost per lead? Uh, it totally depends on your campaigns. Here, I am saying that uh, $66 is good for me. Uh, because I am comparing that to other campaigns. I am comparing Tidewater CPL to Miami Dade CPL. And because the CPL for Tidewater is much lower, it tell, uh, I, I can say, say that, okay, the CPL for Tidewater is low. Uh, while for somebody else, maybe for your campaign, uh, if uh, you, you get the CPL of $66, 
it might be very high for you. It really depends on your campaign, on your targeting, on your product, on your service, on your offering. So you shouldn't really compare my CPLs to your CPLs to say whether if you get a $66 uh, CPL or whether you get a 7% conversion rate, whether it is good or bad for you. It is good for me because I am comparing that to my other campaigns, to my other cities. Okay, now let's look at another dimension. Yeah, instead of city, uh, okay, uh, let's look at objective. As I said, I ran two campaigns, lead generation and web conversion campaigns for each city. I am uh, as you see, uh, I, when I'm comparing uh, the performance for lead generation campaigns objective and web conversion objective, the CPL for lead generation is much lower. Yeah, the conversion rate is almost very similar. Uh, there is not a big difference between click-through rate, but the cost per click and cost per mile is higher for web conversions. Remember, every time that you are dealing with the cost uh, metrics, it should be lower. Cost per lead, cost per click, cost per mile, CPL, CPC, CPM, they should be lower if you, uh, want, if you look for the better performing campaign. Higher cost means lower performance. As you see, there is a big difference between a CPL cost per lead for lead generation and web conversions. And that is why I give a lot more budget to lead generation campaign. I spend more than $1 million on lead generation campaign while I only spend about $100 on web conversion campaign. Because I, I was getting better results. Uh, from lead generation campaigns, higher uh, results. Another thing that you could do is compare cities by objectives. You put both uh, in rows uh, here. Uh, you could uh, compare, uh, uh, for example, in each city, uh, which objective perform better? I'm sure in all of my campaigns lead generation perform better. For example, here on Greater Tampa, lead generation had a cost per lead of $86 by web conversion was very expensive, $274. And therefore, I spend higher budget on lead generation. But there are some campaigns, as you see here in Columbus, the difference between lead generation and the CPL for lead generation and web conversion is not really that high. They are really close to each other. So here you can look at more details. You can analyze your campaigns in more details to realize which objective is better for each city. If I have a, a city that web conversion has lower CPL for the next campaign I can decide uh, only run a web conversion campaign for Tidewater for example and run lead generation in another city okay now uh, let's uh, look at uh, other data other metrics now I'm going to look at the performance of my ads. Here I have ad name, you could add. As I tell, told you already, I have a naming convention for my ads. The naming is really long, so from this I really, I'm not really going to get to understand anything because the names are so long that they are just making me confused. So that's why instead of ad name, I'm going to look at the creative name you don't, uh, you don't have this col uh, column in your uh, Facebook ads reporting as I showed you. This is a column that I created uh, myself from ad name column. 
Okay, let me just remove I war from there, make the naming easier. Okay, I have this many creatives. You could, uh, I tested so many creatives in my campaigns and uh, usually for the creative, the first metric that you want to look at is click to rate because they might not be really related on the conversions that you get or not. Uh, the users only sees, uh, see your creative, your copy on Facebook and decides whether to click or not. So click through rate gives you insight uh, whether your ad was successful in making users click on your ad or not. The higher click through rate is uh, better means better performance. So I sorted my data based on click-through rate from large to small. The creatives that have higher click-through rate, they tell me that, okay, they are performing better because uh, uh, with lower budget, with lower spend, I can make users click more. I have some, uh, creatives uh, here that the click-through rate is uh, very low, uh, below 1%, so they are not performing well. Uh, I didn't run all these creatives at the same time. I was analyzing my data constantly and uh, add, paused some creatives, added some creatives uh, to compare them. So uh, it is not as if for one campaign I had something like 21 creatives at the same time. No, it's not like that. And, uh, but this is uh, the all time data. So it's giving me the data for all campaigns. So for example, for the, my next campaign, I can decide which creatives to use and which to not use. Also, you could look at CPL again. Uh, you, it depends on you uh, to decide whether you want the uh, you want you want to make decision on the win on the winning creative on the winning ad based on CPL or CTR or conversion rate. I sorted the based on CPL from a small to large. As I said, lower cost per lead, lower cost is always better performance. I have some uh, creatives here. Lifestyle. Okay, this is uh, giving me very good insights. Uh, I had four uh, creatives called lifestyle in four different format, different versions from one to four. And all of them have uh, the highest uh, CPL for my campaign. Just let me uh, remove the coloring from them. Okay, lifestyle uh, is all lifestyle creatives have the high CPL. So it gives me good option, good insight, regardless of CTR, regardless of whether their click through rate is high or low. No, they are not working for me because the cost per lead for lifestyle is very high. For example, if uh, I had lifestyle one with very low CPL and lifestyle three with very high CPL. I could have said maybe that was an uh, accident, but uh, because all lifestyle creatives have very high CPL, so no, this uh, creative layout, this creative design is not working for me. And again, I repeat, uh, there is no good and bad CTR standard. Uh, I am saying which CTRs are good and which for ones are bad based on comparing my data. For your campaign, maybe 1.43 is very low CTR. You don't, you don't want to keep that creative or maybe 0.76% uh, uh, is a high CTR. You just need to compare different creatives, different ads, different campaigns in your account with each other. We could also 
Okay, let's now uh, look at ad sets. Again, as you see, my ad sets are really, uh, the naming is, are long. This is just making me more confused. So uh, instead of using ad set name, I'm going to use audience, a uh, column that I created from ad sets. I had four ad sets, actually four columns, four audience, sorry. And let's compare cost per click, small to large. As you see, the retargeting campaign for me was cheaper. Cost per click was cheaper. While customer list, uh, the list that I uploaded from uh, through an Excel file to give an uh, email address or phone num number of my uh, uh, customers or na first name or last name so that Facebook could find those my customers and show my ads to those customers it has very co uh, high cost per click even though the conversion rate is high i mean at this point you should uh, decide this is very interesting case study at one point uh, at one side cost per click for customer customer late customer list is very high you want to the cost per click to be lower for you the higher cost per click means lower performance on the other hand, the conversion rate is very high. As I said, you want the conversion rate to be higher. And also CPL, it is the lowest one. So what should we do here? Uh, should you stop this ad set because the cost per click is so high or should you keep it running because the conversion rate and cost per lead actually is very low? That's where you need to analyze the analyze the performance based on what you want to achieve. Yes, that is correct. The cost per click is very high, but uh, low CPL, uh, the lower CPL cost per lead, uh, a good cost per lead is justifies that high cost per click. I am willing to pay around eight point five dollars for each click for this ad set. Uh, because the cost for result, cost per result is low. It's still worth it for me to pay a lot for each click. So you should analyze this day, these columns, uh, you know, in comparison with each other. Uh, you, you should look at the comprehensive uh, data to decide which one is better and which one is not. Is not. I added CPM here, but uh, maybe you know CPM is a uh, good uh, to analyze rich campaigns or engagement campaigns. Uh, not engagement, rich campaigns. Uh, even though I added that, I'm not going. I'm not really looking at this data because a CPM data to see to say whether, for example, something performed well or something did not. Uh, because uh, I am trying to get leads and conversions, uh, I care more about CPL, cost per kilo, conversion rate, and CTR. Okay, let's look at the copy. Uh, again, I created this copy column from my uh, ad name column, and let's make it uh, more readable. I'm removing unnecessary text in the name. Okay, these are my copies. Again, CTR, first I'm looking at CTR. Okay, the first one didn't really spend much. So the spend is very low that even the CTR is very high. No, I'm not going to uh, look at, at this uh, data. I'm not going to consider this uh, data as good performance because the data is very low. There was only one click. Uh, with one click, you cannot say whether the performance was good or not. It spends only $6. You cannot compare uh, something that spends $6 to something that spent $100,000. Uh, so uh, we're not really considering this low data. For the other ones, uh, 
as you see some of my copies perform better higher click through rate and there for example this one doctor location it has a high click through rate and low cpl so it's performing well i mean this lowest cpl and highest uh, click through rate so this one is obviously giving me, telling me that this copy, this specific co copy performed the best. Another thing that I want to mention is that in order to see whether your data is enough or not, uh, you should always get a statistically significant data. If your data is not significant, you could still read data, you could still uh, get inside, but you should take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, the, you don't necessarily need you know, $1,000 spent uh, to decide, uh, okay, to say, okay, it has good data. Uh, even uh, $500 or $2,000 it can give you still a good data if your data are statistically significant. I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned how to analyze the performance of your campaigns. As I said, this video is uh, very long, but it was a, a tutorial video. After a couple of times uh, working with this data, doing some training, I can assure you, you can do the, all of this in five or 10 minutes. You don't really need to spend uh, one hour time each time you want to analyze data. No, you, you can really uh, get insight and make decisions in five minutes, 10 minutes. If you have any comment, uh, any question about your Facebook campaigns or your paid campaigns on different platforms feel free to ask in the comments thank you for watching this video